Hello again, Struck Pop today I'm bringing you another build video for Torchlight 3 and this one is again for the forged uh, class with the electrode subclass. I've called it the minigun zap bot forged plus electrode build uh, and it's it's a setup that has two ways of playing it. One way of playing it is, uh, as you can see in, in, the, in most of the footage during the video, focusing on rapid fire and I was stacking for the footage uh, for everything except the end uh, gameplay segment of the other footages with stacking uh, two pieces of equipment that give me rapid fire damage. Um, for the final piece, uh, for the final segment in the gameplay, at the end of the video I, I changed some of the gear to give me more swagshot, shot, pressure shot damage. Uh, so, yeah, one way to play it is that, focus on rapid fire, stack casting speed and use the fast uh, attacks per second, uh, the many hits per second of rapid fire to melt single targets. The other way is to do the same but with pressure shot. Um, and since pressure shot is not unlimited like rapid fire, you have to vent more often. Um, but even in the other build, you still even in the other version, you still have to vent to get the crit chance if you want to benefit from it, the crit chance from the gauntlets. So in both cases, ideally you would have imbue relic, which I didn't have. So where you see this basic attack or poison dart in my skill bar, that means that's a slot that needs to be filled with imbue relic once I get the item that grants me that skill. Uh, I, and if I have imbue relic, I would be using the the frost wall and one other piece of the set. So I w I wasn't using those, and I would be using the Liu Genre, which I wasn't also using because um, I just didn't have one of the important pieces. But yeah, the build can be very good, uh, and regardless whether you play it with um, uh, rapid fire or with pressure shot as the big uh, dealer with the big proc monster. Um, it's still good. I, I would say go for pressure shot, it's better, but if you want to play it with rapid fire, if you want to build where you're um, shooting rapid fire as fast as it can go and as much damage as it can get, that's the setup. Let's show you the skills first now. Here we are at the skills segment where I'm gonna show you the skills I've taken and talk about why I've taken them to the level they are at. Keep in mind uh, before um, um, I show you this uh, that I've got plus two skill points for barrage and brawl. So wherever you see four, it means that it's actually six. Wherever you see eight, it's actually ten. Uh, when it's one, it's actually three. And when it's four, it's actually six, as I said. Um, not in the electrode, though. In the electrode, the levels are the way they are, the way you see them. So here I've got the plus two bonus levels, and here I do as well. So now let's talk about the skills and why I took them. Sonic Pulse, level 8 plus 2, uh, for the tier 3 bonus. It's an amazing skill. It not only makes the enemies uh, take 40% more damage for X seconds, but it also uh, gives our steam spending skills 40% extra damage for 6 seconds, meaning Swag Shot would do 40% extra damage um, on its tooltip. And it will also do another 40% extra damage to the enemies because the enemies would be taking 40% more. So it's a great stack. But this 40% uh, weakness applies to anything, not just team spenders. So from rapid fire, um, vortex bomb, anything, uh, even the relic procs and conjure electrode and 1000 volt burst would do the first 40%. Just the second one is for swag shot only. Then rapid fire, I decided to try and build around rapid fire for this setup, that's why I've included it. Um, so for rapid fire, you can see the tier 1 bonus, it's okay, it's decent and now it actually goes over 20 stacks when using the, the repeater. Um, so you can get 23 stacks of rapid fire's extra damage boost, which is, uh, as you see, 10 stacks of 10% weapon damage. Multipl multiplier as you keep shooting um, the tier one makes it 13 stacks and uh, with the repeater it becomes 23 stacks um, we also need the extra barrage skills damage for swag shot uh, and rapid fire itself and we need the 
tier 3 um, although I wish tier 3 was shooting uh, swag shot uh, swag shot pressure shot with its uh, with its current damage I think it would be much more useful if they make the tier 3 of rapid fire shoot um, our current uh, version of, of pressure shot for free um, every 10 shot because it's 10 shots I mean yeah it doesn't take that much to get 10 shots because it shoots quickly especially with uh, casting speed but it's kind of underwhelming and um, swag shot even for single target seems to be the better uh, thing to spam from my tests so moving on to pressure shot uh, uh, previously known as swag shot that's why I sometimes refer to it that way because it's just old habits um, it's amazing, uh, it's amazing and um, I think it would be better if you don't build around rapid fire uh, and my previous build I uploaded is a, a more pr pressure shot oriented build but I made this one for people who want to see a more rapid fire oriented build uh, I think it would be better if you put two more points so you can get 10 plus 2 uh, for level 12 pressure shot um, to get extra damage squeezed out of that skill uh, it's great, it gives us crit chance for barrage skills, which applies to rapid fire and uh, pressure shot or anything else we take. And uh, every fourth hit uh, always critically hits, but this thing that says deals double damage doesn't really work. It actually does the same uh, crit damage that a normal pressure shot does, so I guess this is probably broken. Uh, or, or they or they, um, they need to reword it then. Now here we've taken fracking strike. Uh, Fracking strike is um, for the 10% to all four skill cooldowns, which soon is getting a rework, um, uh, judging by the dust match, which already got that rework. So this soon we will apply that cooldown to item granted skills, uh, such as Imbu Relic, which we do need for this build and I didn't have. And it will also apply to the barrier on each relic. Every relic has one such defensive skill. So that would be two seconds uh, down from 20 to 18. Um, and other things um, benefit from it. Obviously, we benefit from it with power projection. And uh, Ramic Robots, strangely enough, doesn't benefit from it because I guess it's a movement skill, but I think it should. And Vortex Bomb does benefit greatly from it. So um, I, I just don't like not taking this. Uh, I like taking it. This one's um, benefiting from two seconds cooldown. This one's benefiting from um, another nice uh, cooldown reduction. And this one also benefits from the cooldown. So it's pretty solid to, to get it. Um, this one gives us Dentro Relic skills. And I think it's great because uh, Conjure Relic Throat uh, gets a very decent boost out of it. Um, I think from... Um, from those 10% it goes from 6,000 something to 7,000 something um, per hit with That's just, just one example when I test it without any buffs or anything So yeah, the, the, the better your weapon obviously the better the difference will be So 10% might not seem like much but when there are so many shock bolts that this shoots um, That means that's a huge DPS boost to it and um, the thing that doesn't get this boost, and I think it should, is Lightning Strike. Lightning Strike, I've tested. This does not get any change from the 10% damage relic skill, so keep that in mind. We've also put one point into Power Projection, um, which with the two extra levels gives us the healing, which is nice. Um, I only use that for the defense and sometimes for the healing. And speaking of defense, here comes Vortex Bomb, an amazing skill. Um, it gives you um, double the defense while using it with the tier 1 bonus. This lasts for 4 seconds after using Vortex Bomb. And then there's the damage reduction increase, which means every time you use um, uh, Ramming Robot or Vortex Bomb and you hit an enemy, you get um, um, not 50 but 70% damage reduction because this increases the fighter spirit to, to 70 from 50 and then the tier 3 bonus is nice it's not something I count much on but it's good uh, I normally level it up just for the cooldown if you want to spam vortex bomb more you can put two more points in into it um, by removing points from other places so there's ways to rework the build if you don't need the relic skills or the cooldown reduction you can remove them or if you don't need some um, tier 3 thousand volt burst if you don't want to be spamming thousand volt burst and conjure electrode as much which I think you should 
um, because that's kind of what this build is about, casting speed stacking, so um, using this as much as possible and this as much as possible. But let's say you have imbue relic from the arc, um, not arc power, from the ancient timber chest and you want to sacrifice this tier 3 bonus, that's okay. It, it's acceptable to lose those four points and then maybe you can put um, maybe you can put one point here to max that one out because I had to remove it maybe you can put two points here or two points here or two points here or you can put two points here and here and maybe one point here and um, uh, actually you can't put one point here because it's only four points but um, you kind of get um, what I'm talking about um, there's ways to get vortex bomb to be the centerpiece uh, if you put four points here, so let's say you remove points from this thing, uh, three points, and maybe you remove, uh, uh, maybe you remove um, four points here. That gives you seven points, and you can put one here. You can put four here, uh, and maybe the other ones into pressure shot, for example. So let's talk about the legendarium. The legendarium, um, you can be flexible re with the legendarium regarding what gear you've got. So when I was wearing Mountain King Quiras and those shoulders and this, um, which was for every single gameplay footage in the in the um, uh, in the video except one, is with those three items. So instead of the shoulders I'm wearing, uh, I wore this. Instead of the chest I'm wearing, I wore this. And instead of this thing I'm wearing, I wore this. I just wanted to do one map where I'm testing focusing on slug shot. Uh, rather than rapid fire damage to see if it's better and believe me it's better um, focusing on slug shot is the way to go normally but if you want to go rapid fire sure stack rapid fire it's it's fine so just be, be flexible about it and more about the gear later but uh, based on what you're wearing uh, you have to rework the legendarium so you would need to have three pieces equipped of the Mountain King set, which means in the Legendarium you would have to equip the fourth piece. Why fourth piece? Because you want the helmet, you want the cuirass for the skill levels, you want the gauntlets for the crit chance after venting uh, 75 for more heat, um, and you want the wheel, so you can get um, heat back. Alternatively, you can sacrifice the wheel and just build your heat yourself, um, that's okay. Um, but you definitely want um, the helmet, the, the cuirass and the gauntlets. Uh, those are the four pieces. Helmet, cuirass, gauntlets, wheel from the Mountain King set. From the Winter Weave the gauntlets are amazing. The shoulders right now only work in the fort, but they don't work um, um, during a map on the forged. But it works on other heroes um, in the map, so um, I guess they're gonna fix it eventually. The Winter Weave wheel is amazing, uh, uh, it's not bad. Some people might like the Winter Weave hatch as well. Uh, I would suggest uh, this one is also another thing if you're mixing and matching, if you're not going for two sets of three. Um, you can get that and just with this item and with the Mountain King gauntlets you've got your crit chance kind of maxed out already. So uh, keep that in mind. This would also give you stun and knockback resistance, uh, which is good for melee builds, not as much for this one, but keep it in mind. Winter with Quiras is also great, but more about that uh, um, in, the, in, the, in the gear segment. Right now I'm just telling you things that you might want to consider in your, in your Legendarium that might help you. So another thing um, that you really would want to consider is ancient timber pieces such as the hatch. Uh, I really need ancient timber hatch. It's a must have uh, for this build uh, because it gives us imbue relic. Um, more about that synergy in the gear segment but basically you synergize frost wall with one of those two weapons and then equip the, the, the ancient timber hatch and uh, use the use the Liu General, either equipped or in the Legendarium, depending which one you're wearing. So if you wear Frost Wall, you, you swat the Liu General or vice versa, but you have to wear one of those to, un to accompany it, so you can get the set bonus. Uh, and yeah, that gives you cooldown for Imbue Relic, uh, reduced to 30 seconds. So Ancient Ember Hatch, which I can't show you because I don't have it, um, uh, is great. And you might want to maybe consider combining it with the Threads. But yeah, um, ideally in my Legendarium I would have uh, the extra repeater if I'm going for rapid fire focus, if you're going for um, um, for swag shot, for um, uh, pressure shot focus, then don't take this and make some room uh, for something else. And um, 
and uh, put the Liu General, put the put the hatch here or wear it, the ancient ember hatch. But another thing you might want to consider is arc powered things. Arc powered things, uh, but keep in mind uh, the legs of the arc powered set, the Waku motion. They don't do anything for your for your relic skills. The shock bolts from this don't get boosted. The shock bolts from this don't get boosted from the shock bolt damage. So they need to fix this item. I think uh, it's not intended to to be this bad. Um, it's 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 a new rework of that item. So that's that. Um, you you might also want to equip in the legendary one stable war arm if you don't have it. So keep that in mind. And I think we covered everything legendary related. Now let's show you the pet skills. I'm wearing defender because I think the crit chance I've got from the passives and from uh, and from the gauntlets uh, gives me 30 and even if I don't have crit chance here and here which I could um, I could have 5 here and here and that could put me to 40 I think I thought I'm fine and I thought I'd rather have more defense and survivability but if you want you can go crit chance or movement speed or block chance for the aura also make sure you, you equip a different one than your teammates if you play co-op you can't stack them, but you can stack all four if you have four people, one with each of those. Then uh, healing friendship is a must-have in my opinion. If you think you don't need the healing, obviously don't take it. I always take it. Zoom is I really like uh, more about why, um, about the Drat neckband uh, later, but that attack speed basically helps you heal faster and proc token of invigoration faster. And then I like taking the damage, but um, feel free to put any other things you like. This doesn't seem to work properly. This also doesn't work, and this doesn't work, and this doesn't work. But they're new, um, so I guess they're they're still trying to fix them to work properly. Um, and that's it for the skills. Next, we're gonna talk about the items. And here we are at the gear segment, where I'm gonna talk about some of the items I would recommend uh, equipping and what stats you would have on them. It might uh, become a little longer than I want it to be because there are just so many things um, that have been added that allow you so much variety and versatility of the build. But um, I would start with the weapon and shield. Um, uh, and cannon. Uh, ideally you would wear an unstable war arm, good road. Um, every cannon comes with a flat type of damage at the top and crit chance. So it doesn't matter which flat, and, uh, which flat you get unless you're stacking percent to that element. Uh, which is not as great uh, as stacking flat or crit chance or crit damage. So this gives you crit chance, crit, um, uh, this is gives you um, uh, flat damage and then at the bottom you would probably want at least three uh, actually let's not say three let's say two pieces of flat damage are good something like this is pretty decent the problem is it doesn't have a socket and instead of chance to shock it does chance to bleed i like the crit chance on it it's nice i like the um the two flat damages um i mean if i get three flat damages and chance to shock that's nice if i get three flat damages and crit chance that's not bad either crit damage is also a good stat um but uh, uh, again if you have a socket if you put some flat damage in the socket uh it is much better and from the sockets the best thing to take for weapons and for cannons is hot or cold for now uh, unless they rework the system because it has six things you can get and out of those six things two which is one third uh, is flat damage on the others you can see um, the, the amount of uh, things uh, versus the flat damage amount is much uh, less so this one look at how many one two three four five six seven eight and one of them only is uh, flat this one you have five and one of them is flat so obviously six with two flats um, is the better uh, option. Um, the cannon has kind of the same ones as the weapon, I just it didn't have a socket so I couldn't show you. Um, so yeah, unstable war arm ideally with uh, some flat damages, crit chance, crit damage and ideally chance to shock. Chance to shock would really increase the DPS of, of a build like this, any electrode build with lightning strike in general. So ritual finale, I mean um, that's obviously something that's just a temporary weapon here. Um, so ideally there you would have either the North Mace or the Glacier's Edge, obviously at level 60 and obviously with good stats. By good stats I mean flat at the top, then in the middle you would want 
съм флат damage, chance to shock, if you get two times flat damage, chance to shock, or crit chance, crit damage, flat damage, chance to shock, those are not bad. Um, uh, I would strongly urge you to try and get at least one chance to shock, uh, and then at least one flat, and then after that either more flat or crit damage or crit chance, or levels to slug shot or rapid fire, uh, pressure shot, not slug shot. Um, uh, and then you combine that with a frost wall shield, um, on which you can also put chance to shock. So if the weapon uh, is missing chance to shock, and if you want to go flat damage only on the weapon, if you have an amazing damage with so much flat damage and crit chance, crit damage, uh, where you're saying, okay, I'm gonna sacrifice, I'm not gonna try and get one for chance to shock, you can put chance to shock in your shield or in your Liu General if you're wearing one. So uh, you want this this chance to shock affix which you're seeing on both of my shields, not the one that gives you um, um, shock affixes. Uh, this one, you see, it says plus uh, X percent to shock chance affixes. This one only gives you chance to shock. It doesn't give you the duration. It doesn't give you the damage, and it gives you a smaller number than the other one, which makes no sense to have one such affix in the pool. But it is there. So, so yeah, ideally wear a frost wall with one of those two, with good rolls. Uh, you want some defenses uh, at the top, obviously, and some block chance. Um, and yeah, uh, if you if you have a focus item, it can roll with flat damages, like a little, little general with flat damages, and little general can roll with the sh with the chance to shock in the middle as well. So keep that in mind. Um, uh, and when you're wearing those two. You can equip the Liu General in the Legendarium. If you don't want to wear a Frost Wall, you can put it in the Legendarium, but you must wear the Liu General so you can get that uh, uh, bonus cooldown. And we need that bonus cooldown because it synergizes with the Ancient Ember Hatch, which I'm gonna try and show you now, so you know what I'm talking about, which item I'm talking about. So, just a moment to scroll down to the Ancient Ember Hatch. It's over here at the bottom. It, it gives you this skill, gain active skill, imbue relic, fully charge relic energy and reset relic skill cooldowns. And if you have three pieces equipped, which it's not a must have, but it's going to be very good for this uh, type of setup. Um, it also makes a uh, thousand volt burst immediately available to cast, meaning you don't have to refill this energy. If you've just used thousand, thousand volt burst uh, and, and this is not uh, refilled, but you have Imbue Relic, you can do it Imbue Relic uh, every 30 seconds, boom, this is refilled. And soon they're gonna fix this um, to grant um, item item granted skills uh, cooldown reduction, which would make Imbue Relic's cooldown um, go as low as 24 seconds. Which means every 24 seconds you can get the 20 second duration of 50% casting speed, um, which is amazing, which means only 4 second downtime. Um, so hopefully with the next patch they fix this the same way it works on the mage. So with the frost wall and uh, and one more item, you get it down to 30 seconds. With uh, fracking strike tier two, it would be able to go down to 24 seconds when it's fixed, um, leaving you only four seconds of downtime of the skill. And on top of that, you get fully recharged um, relic energy, so you can do two conjure electrodes extra every uh, 24, uh, right now 30 seconds. So it's it's nice, it's great uh, synergy. Um, now that we've talked about the weapons, let's talk about the armor. Again, this is getting a very long video, uh, as, as kind of the last few videos have been. So uh, you want three pieces of the Mountain King set equipped, which are the helmet, the gauntlets, um, and um, the, the, the cuirass, and maybe the wheel. You can swap the wheel in the Legendarium, you can swap the cuirass in the Legendarium, you can swap the gauntlets in the legium, Legendarium or the Mountain King Helmet. Wear three pieces of those four, swap one in the Legendarium. Or wear four pieces if you, if you don't want to go three plus three. By 3 plus 3 I mean 3 pieces Mountain King, 3 pieces of another set, which can be Winter Weave, it can be Ancient Timber, which is my suggestion, um, and um, it can be Arc Powered, uh, which right now is broken, doesn't work the way it should. Um, this thing, 25 or 50% Shock Bolt damage, does not give you increased damage to the Conjure Electrode Shock Bolts or to the Lightning Barrier Shock Bolts, so avoid it for now. Ideally, you would wear um, the Ancient Ember Threads. 
swatting the Mountain King wheel. Uh, you would wear the Ancient Ember hatch. And you would wear the Ancient Ember shoulders. Which uh, I'm not taking the shoulders because uh, I need to take those shoulders. Uh, I, I'm suggesting take the shoulders because there aren't any other um, worthy Ancient Ember pieces that synergize with this build. The other Ancient Ember pieces are just not that great of a synergy for that setup. I'm gonna try and show you what I mean. Um, why, why the shoulders and not the other ones. So, the shoulders. Look, look at the gauntlets. Chaotic Strikes, not a synergy for us. Um, the shoulders give us a decent synergy. Every uh, 24 when it's fixed right now, 30 seconds when you use uh, 1000 volt burst, uh, you would be able to get a shrine effect. Uh, and since you can double cast 1000 volt burst, um, uh, it's gonna be pretty. Ancient Ember helmet, definitely not for this build. An Ancient Ember chest, um, it's not bad, but again, I'm, I'm not sure whether it works if you don't have the, the, the points into the skill. So, again, I would suggest Ancient Ember um, threads, uh, hatch, and shoulders while wearing Mountain King helmet us and gauntlets and swatting the mountain king wheel now let's talk about the affixes you would want to take in each of those pieces of equipment um, you would want one of the highest priorities would be getting swag shot damage or rapid fire damage you decide which one you go for and you get it uh, i would suggest don't go for rapid fire damage swag shot damage uh, and focusing on stacking swag shot damage gives you better result uh, after my testing so there's three pieces of equipment that can give you percent damage to a skill. That's the chest, the leg, and the shoulders. Uh, so on the shoulders, ideally you would have crit damage in the middle with uh, with uh, swag shot damage, which is pressure shot damage. Just needs to be renamed, uh, left over the old name. Um, those are my suggestions. Uh, I mean, focus focus on the swag shot damage, not on the crit damage. But obviously, if you can get both. Um, you've hit jackpot, especially if you get a socket or two. Although don't count on two sockets remaining, uh, because they shouldn't be. We shouldn't get more than one socket on blue and legendary items. Then on the chest you can get uh, swag shot damage with flat damage, the best combo. Or swag shot damage with crit damage, which is not a bad, com bad combo either. Um, you can also get swag shot damage with percent to a certain element, but um, that's not great unless you're stacking that element in your cannon and your and your weapon. Uh, and then the other third uh, piece of equipment, as I mentioned, is the Woku Motion. It can get swag shot damage slash pressure shot damage with crit chance or with flat damage. Ideally, you would want it with flat damage. So if you get swag shot damage and flat damage here, you've hit jackpot. Alternatively, swag shot damage crit chance uh, is not bad. Uh, uh, or just get more defense if you if, if you have to settle for something or shock duration. Now, for the other pieces of the armor, uh, you can get duration to sonic pulse, duration to power projection. I would say sonic pulse is better. It can roll on the hatch, it can roll on the gauntlets. But for the hatch, what's better is crit damage. Uh, priority number one for the hatch is crit damage. Um, uh, so try to get that one. You can also get other things such as uh, uh, such as Relic Energy Generation um, and uh, Relic Energy Cost. Uh, and uh, Relic Energy Generation and Cost you can get on the gauntlets and you can also get them on a helmet. But on the helmet the priority would be crit chance uh, and maybe levels to swag shot for extra uh, damage. You can out level skills, over level skills past level 10. They still do damage, more damage than they do. So it's worth it uh, getting um, 3, 4, etc. levels to swag shot, uh, to pressure shot over here, uh, together with crit chance. Um, but you can get relic uh, energy generation or cost reduction there as well. Now let's talk about the pet items to wrap things up here. So the Drat neck band, the token of rapid bartering and the token of invigoration are my favorite setup. If you don't uh, send your pet to the town as much, uh, then uh, maybe Phoenix token is good if it if it keeps dying. If it doesn't die, then definitely you don't need Phoenix token. Uh, I wouldn't suggest removing token of invigoration, but if you want, you can uh, add any other things. But uh, I wouldn't recommend removing the Drat neck band uh, if you need survivability, a little bit of extra healing now and then. Uh, 
The way I synergize it is I take draw neck bend, which on pet hits heals us and the pet. Then I stack pet attack speed here, here and here ideally. And then on the second uh, affix slot, I try to get um, under the pet attack speed instead of this chance to shock, I try to get pet cooldown, um, a cooldown to pet active skills. So if you have attack speed and cooldown to pet active skills here, here and here, uh, and then in the sockets here you can get more cooldown to pet active skills, uh, which is from this one um, over here. Actually there's two ways you can get it. One is Bloody Carnage, which gives you one, two, three, four options, one of them being the cooldown, and this one, four options, one of them being the cooldown. Um, so you can get the cooldown in the tax, but not in the neck band. So um, that kind of pretty much is it. Other pieces of equipment that are worth uh, considering is the Wood Beast Hatch. This together with the gauntlets gives you a uh, cap of crit chance. Uh, so it's pretty solid. Um, and and yeah, Winter with Gauntlets is amazing. Um, the wheels are amazing. And I think I've pretty much covered everything. Uh, let's show you some gameplay f gameplay footage to top the video now. And here we are at the gameplay segment where I'm gonna show you more footage of the building action uh, and I'm gonna talk about uh, ways you could rotate the skills. Uh, the rotations are kind of flexible regarding where you get your casting speed and whether you go for uh, 50 casting speed or whether you go for 75 which caps at 60 so you're wasting some that way. Um, also, in this footage you're gonna see now at the end, I'm using gear that gives me damage to pressure shot to items uh, instead of damage to rapid fire. So, um, you can see I'm focusing on using pressure shot more than the other uh, footage used in the video. Um, and I'm not using rapid fire as much and I think this is the better way to play it. That's why I decided to put this uh, in this segment. Now, for the rotation, um, Ideally, you want to use Sonic Pulse right before Vortex Bomb and then immediately start using Pressure Shot. Uh, maybe use, um, if it's ready, Conjure Electrode um, right after the Vortex Bomb, um, before, the, before, before the Pressure Shot spam. Um, two times Conjure Electrode gives you 50%. Um, and uh, if you have Imbu Relic, you can use Imbu Relic. And if you have Liu General while using Imbu Relic, you get another 25% casting speed which um, could cap um, at, seven, uh, at 60 with the 75 from um, Imbu Relic and then uh, the Liu General's proc and then two times Conjure Electrode. Or you can use um, 1000 Volt Burst for another 50%, which can be combined with either Imbu Relic or with one Conjure Electrode for reaching the cap as well. Or you can use three times Conjure Electrode if you can do it before it expires, but there's flexibility. To get notified when I upload more content for this game or uh, other games like this one, which would be Wooters of all varieties, isometric, uh, third person ARPGs, uh, Wooter shooters and all sorts of uh, Wooters like that, you could subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to not miss out uh, on my content updates. And optionally you can even join as a member of the Struck Club uh, on YouTube as a channel member to get access to exclusive perks such as um, special emotes custom made by me, special badges custom made by me that represents how many months you have been a member for, uh, as well as uh, opt-in uh, of editing tutorials that I can give for Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, as well as uh, shout-outs and things like that. And I would like to use this uh, part of the video to thank all my um, YouTube members and uh, Twitch subscribers. Thank you for supporting the channel and keeping me going. Uh, thank you also for watching this video, everyone. Keep it cool, uh, Struck Club. Until next time and goodbye.